Heading into every single NFL season, there are always big storylines to watch. Last year, there were reports detailing drop issues for Jamar Chase during training camp. There were a lot of doubters making Jamar Chase and Penny Sewell memes criticizing the Bengals' decision for not taking an offensive lineman. Jamar Chase then went on to win Rookie of the Year and had one of the best rookie wide receiver seasons in NFL history. Last year, there was also Matthew Stafford's move to the Rams from the Lions. There was a lot of discussion surrounding how successful he would be with a new franchise, a great franchise with a great coach after years with the Lions losing franchise and culture. He answered that preseason storyline by winning a Super Bowl. In this video, I'm going to break down three of the biggest storylines heading into the 2022 NFL season, or at least storylines that I want to talk about. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe, and to start things off, I want to talk about the rookie wide receivers. In the age of the modern NFL, where teams are passing more than any other point in NFL history, it seems there are more and more elite or very good wide receivers coming into the NFL every single season. In 2022, there were six wide receivers taken in the first 20 picks and seven wide receivers taken in the second round. That begs the question, how many of them are going to be elite number one guys and which one is going to be the best rookie wide receiver? Which one is going to be the Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson of 2022? Right away, we know it is not going to be Garrett Wilson because he's playing for the Jets. And to at least start the season, Joe Flacco is going to be throwing him passes. And when Zach Wilson gets healthy, he has not proven yet he can be an elite quarterback in the NFL. There's a big question mark there. Likewise, we know it's not going to be Jahan Dotson because Carson Wentz, of all people, is going to be throwing him passes. Jamison Williams is coming off an ACL injury he suffered in the national championship, and I love his long-term projections. I just don't think he's going to be super successful in year one coming off that injury, especially with the Lions playing it a little bit safe, and Jared Goff is his quarterback. That leaves Chris Olave, Drake London, Traylon Burks, and the second-round receivers as our likely rookie year breakout stars, and there are two names among that group that I think are going to be competing for the best rookie wide receiver title. One is Drake Drake London, who was the first receiver drafted, and I was not that high on him heading into the draft, but after seeing him produce in training camp and perform against other NFL talent, I'm a big believer. He is more than capable of creating separation and still has that elite jump ball ability. He is going to put up big numbers with Mariota in year one, right next to Kyle Pitts, despite the fact the Falcons are pretty much bad everywhere else on their roster. The other rookie I think is going to have a big rookie season is George Pickens. He has more than proven in training camp and the preseason that it was flat out disrespectful that 10 wide receivers were drafted before him in this year's draft. He has excellent hands, is a good route runner, and is a very good athlete. There's nothing not to like about his game because he's even out there pancaking corners. He's going to be very successful in the Steelers offense, not only because of how talented he is, but because defenses will have to find a way to cover Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, and an emerging star at tight end in Pat Fryermuth. I think him and Drake London are the most likely candidates to put on a Jamar Chase performance in 2022. The next storyline I wanted to cover is a bit more specific, and it is the Kansas City Chiefs offense. I think it is going to be really interesting how we see the Chiefs offense evolve this season in the post Tyreek Hill era. I've seen some people and some Chiefs fans coping with the loss on social media by saying Travis Kelsey was always Mahomes' number one option, and even if you have that belief, and I give you that concession, these people are greatly undervaluing what Tyreek Hill's speed did for the Chiefs. His speed and underrated route running ability gave someone defenses knew they could not cover with just one corner every single week and it took attention away from Travis Kelsey. Tyreek Hill did so many things for the Chiefs offense even in the run game. I like a lot of the guys the Chiefs have at receiver right now but none of them are going to take attention away from Kelsey like Tyreek did. None of them are that dynamic. Juju Smith-Schuster, Marcus Valdez-Scanling, McCole Hardman are not that caliber of wide receiver. I also think it is unfair to set Tyreek level lofty expectations for Sky Moore in his rookie season. In 2022, I think we are going to see the Chiefs get more methodical with their approach on offense, increase the rate at which they run the ball with four running backs now on the roster to start the season, and while we definitely still will see Mahomes occasionally play hero ball and make crazy throws, I think that is also going to see a downtick as well, since Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey aren't on the field at the same time anymore. I'm excited to watch the 2022 Chiefs offense. I am not downplaying them by any means, but it is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. And lastly, we have Russell Wilson's move from the Seahawks to the Denver Broncos. One of the biggest trades in recent years. And the thing I'm most interested to see is how quickly the Broncos offense becomes one of the better ones in the NFL. For years, Russell Wilson carried the Seahawks offense to wins, and I'm wondering how long that's going to take with the Broncos. And I don't love the Broncos offensive pieces as much as other people do. I'm not in love with Jerry Judy. I've always liked other rookie wide receivers from his class a lot more than him. I think Broncos fans hype up his route running way too much. Is he very good at it? Yes, but he still needs to catch the ball. He still needs to have that on 
on-field production, and I've never been the biggest fan of Cortland Sutton. So I think it's going to be interesting how Russell Wilson's going to produce, moving to a different offense with different running backs, different receivers. He no longer has DK Metcalf. He doesn't have Tyra Lockett. Both guys that I think are better than Cortland Sutton and are better than Jerry Judy. So it's going to be interesting how it evolves. I think the Broncos are going to come in last in the division, although all four teams could finish with a winning record, but I don't have the highest expectations. I think it's going to take a little bit longer than other people think for the Broncos offense to become elite with Russell Wilson in it. That has been the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next podcast or video.